She's teaching others about the power of prayer. Catch the Fire Canada senior leader, Patricia Bootsma, tells us how to experience God on a whole new level. Plus, Ephraim Graham joins us to share this week's top stories from the world of entertainment. That and more on today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, welcome to the show. Here's Ephraim Graham with this week's top five stories from Studio Five. At number five. Hello, I am Adun. Now I am very fine. Encouraging news keeps coming in the story of those 12 young soccer players trapped in a flooded cave in Thailand for more than two weeks. I'm very thank you so heavy. Thank you so much. The world is certainly fascinated with this story. And with that in mind, Pure Flix CEO Michael Scott is in Thailand eyeing movie rights to the cave rescue story. He witnessed it firsthand, joins us now. Where do you stand in terms of beginning a production of the film and securing those rights? We're just meeting with different people that we know um, that were involved in the rescue operation, uh, from people that coordinated it to divers that were involved uh, to a little bit of everybody and getting those rights. And then we're also in the process right now bringing on a really great screenwriter. Um, I can't say who right now, but I think we'll have some uh, good news on that shortly. At number four. The largest and longest running music festival in the country, the Vans Warp Tour, comes to an end this summer. Being able to play in front of so many new people and it's just been honestly a blessing. I always just try to, to spread a message of love. Studio 5 joined the tour on its stop in Virginia Beach to measure its impact on musicians and fans from across the world since its start in 1995. The camaraderie is amazing. Making this many friends is amazing. Watching bands support each other is amazing. At number three. In West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground is where I spent most of my days. And West Philadelphia showers some brotherly love on native son Will Smith with a 65 foot tall tribute on the side of this building across the street from the Global Leadership Academy. The idea that there would be a mural of me on the side of a school in West Philadelphia just wrecked me. London-born artist Richard Wilson painted the mural that gives new meaning to Big Willie style. I just typed in West Philly on my laptop and just plus, plus, plus until it, it zoomed in right on, on the map where it says West Philadelphia. And then I turned it to the virtual street view and I'm just driving up and down the street looking for the tallest building I could find because by that point I knew I wanted to do sitting in the chair. If you're a kid here growing up now and you see this every day, it can give you a real understanding that this guy is me. It's meant to inspire, and Will Smith is taking it a step further, now selling mural merchandise to raise money for the school. Ooh. To see my mother's face when she looked at the mural, that was, that was profoundly moving for me. At number two. That's how it keeps you in cycle. A surprising blog from gospel recording artist Jonathan McReynolds, who shares 10 reasons not to be a gospel recording artist. They include things like the industry is small and it's slow to change, things he hinted at in this sit down with Studio 5. It's, it's incumbent upon every generation of the body of Christ to express their feelings to pursue God in their own way, with their own language, with their own uh, cultural pot that they are, you know, eating from. And that is what is going to easily and naturally invite people of my generation. I think people either don't try hard enough or they just try way too hard, instead of just being you. Jesus, take from me all the pressure, pressure, pressure. Jonathan also warns you will be copied and pressured to copy. People have always equated R&B and soul music and country, I guess, with humanity. And Christianity, that's some kind of superhero thing that we can't attain. Either we have it or we don't. And that's not the truth. At number one. The Showers family group's story of rising from the ashes 
everything is lost. Nobody lost everything. Is getting even sweeter a year after losing everything in a house fire. The group's manager and oldest sibling, Regina Showers Gordon, is launching a new radio station, Faith Star Radio, and venturing into television with Good Soul TV. It's just a testament of who God is. If you are faithful to God, God will be faithful to you. If you walk in obedience, He promises all of these blessings. That was a good word. If you are faithful to Him, He will be faithful to you. What do you think about the Showers family, this I new platform? I love this family. Um, I'm very interested. In, this will be a, a digital uh, radio platform as well as digital television. A uh, new venture for them and having spent some time with the entire family um, over the course of a weekend um, some months ago. They they're an amazing you? family. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I've been invited back because mom didn't have a chance to cook gumbo while I was there. So she Did promised me some gumbo. Yes, I'm going back for at least some gumbo. <laughs> <laughs> some gumbo in Hammond, Louisiana. Will be the ultimate test <laughs> if you're invited. Well, a family of 10 and they've got children and wives and husbands. But a uh, beautiful family. Lots of love. Yes, yes. And they love on everyone, mom especially. Um, but to see that family go through what they went through, mm -hmm. I mean, lost everything, cars, furniture. This was their mom's dream home is where they yeah. always gathered. The biggest and thing in the yeah, pictures. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you, you lose the pictures. You lose and... it all. And for their dad to tell me, he said, you know, as I was watching it, I could have gotten upset. I could have got angry. He goes, but I saw God in it. And he goes, because I saw God in it, I was like, okay, I'm going to get through this because God's going to take care of me. And then he learns that his daughter was at, who, that Regina, who we saw, was actually on the verge mm -hmm. of giving up and closing the record label, quitting the family business because she had just gotten so tired of the pressure of family. And then that was her wake up call, too. She's like, you know, that was a sign to me that God says, you don't quit until... I tell you to quit. You have to remain well, faithful. You don't quit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got that right. He's yeah. not going to tell yeah. you Yeah, we're too. supposed to be like Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus didn't quit. No, he, he kept didn't. on going. Uh -huh. And so death couldn't hold him down. <laughs> you got it. You got it. <laughs> he kept on going. Indeed. All right. Jonathan McReynolds, is, he's come out and said, don't be a gospel artist. <laughs> when I read that headline, I was like, what? And he is quite successful himself in, in many genres. Uh, on many levels. But then when I read the things that he said, I got it. And essentially said, it was a response to all the questions he was getting from fans and those who wanted to pursue the industry. What mm -hmm. he found was, they weren't necessarily ready to endure this industry and their motivations may not have been right. He goes, you're putting yourself out here like this on this platform where you, you're a Christ representative. That's what, you, that's what you're, you're doing. And if you're not living the lifestyle and it's not what you want to do, then maybe the gospel industry isn't for you. Don't think you're going to get rich. Don't think you're going to be famous. I think he noted that only 5% of the country actually consumes gospel music. So he goes, so it's a small, small pot. And but it's loyal. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but, it's loyal. Um, but those who make it end up staying. Uh, and only a few new artists are introduced every single but year. Can't you say that about anything? You can you certainly can. Um, certainly anything in the music business, mm -hmm. uh, the council is keep your day job. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually, when people come to me about, should I get into ministry? Uh -huh. um, I, I, I can be very discouraged. <laughs> For me, unless you're called. Absolutely, I agree there. Unless you're called. Mm -hmm. um, there's, you don't understand what's involved. And it's funny because when you sit down with many ministers, some of the best um, that I've learned from, they all tell me, well, there was a period where I ran from this. This is not what I wanted to do. This is not how I saw my life playing out. But God, of course, had these plans and I had oh, to follow I'm, it. I'm the uh, <laughs> 20 years. Run, no. Running, no, running. no, 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 no. <laughs> Knew I was called when I was six, seven years old. No, 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 no. I, I saw the cost and went, no, 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 no. I, yeah, I, count the I got other things to do. How about you? Would, you, would you do it again? Um, I would. This is not what I how, what I envisioned for myself. I was going to mm. be a high school English teacher, <laughs> uh, and, and then, you would have been a very good one. <laughs> I hope so. But no, God had other plans, so I, I chose to follow because my grandmother taught me: you don't follow, you're going to be quite miserable. You may even be successful successful at what it is you want to do, but if you're not doing what God has called you to do, you're not going to be happy. Your grandmother's wise. She is very wise, very uh, wise. We're getting uh, close to that 100th birthday. I, I can say that happened to me. Oh, see? Yeah. Mm. You can be successful and you're going to be really unhappy. 
And uh, yeah. Valuable lesson. Yeah. Indeed. I'm going to have a moment. <laughs> 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 the wisdom of Ephraim. Uh, All right, let's talk about the Thai uh, soccer team. Their headlines around the world, people uh, praying for them around the world. Absolutely. Uh, miracle rescue. Yeah, a miracle rescue. And indeed. You, you, you just look at the brave divers. Here, here you have a diver who dies. Yeah. And they say, we're still in. Yeah. We're still going to do this. And that's actually Pure Fix, Pure Flix's connection to the story, uh, Michael Scott is married to a woman from Thailand. They spend mm. part of their lives living there. She was friends with that diver. So oh. they were already there um, witnessing and watching. So the pain that's of learning. That's an untold yeah. story. So the pain, of learn yeah, the pain of learning that, oh, that's actually a friend of ours. Uh, that only increased their desire to make sure that his story is told uh, as well as, you know, this entire rescue. And, of course, them coming as Christian filmmakers trying to find God in all this to show the world uh, his handiwork. I do uh, wonder about that. Yeah. Because Thailand's a Buddhist nation. Absolutely. I assume mm -hmm. um, these Many of those boys be. Yeah. are Buddhists. Yes, they are um, indeed. Um, and I assume the divers are too. Yeah, I, many would be. Uh, but there are Americans over there just like him, and I'm sure and we sent uh, Navy SEALs over there as well. So there are, there are many uh, believer stories to get as well, because Pure Flix is going to do that. We know that for sure. All right. Will Smith, going back to Philadelphia in a big way. Um, <laughs> a 65-foot mural. <laughs> what, do you think that's going to go building. to his head? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I've had the pleasure of meeting him uh, at least two times. He is the, the epitome of humility. Uh, in many places, when you go to interview someone, there are a bunch of people who are around them, and they're the ones who open the door to let you in. When I knocked on the door to get into the room with Will Smith, Will Smith yeah. opens the door. He shakes your Will hand. Will Smith is he his own yes, handler. Yes, he, he, <laughs> he walks you to I your seat. I do not have an entourage. I don't need, I don't, no, and, and I, I love that about him. Uh, and mm. he shares his wife and his family uh, with the world. He even seeing that mural done for him, his brain immediately goes, well, how can I give this back? What can I do to give this back? And they created literally a whole website of merchandise, encouraging yeah. people to purchase. His entrepreneurial yeah. brain took over. I'm not getting when, anything. When you from can it. merchandise a <laughs> yes, mural, yes, and say, yes. okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure this out mm -hmm. and give back to the community through it. That's awesome. All of it goes back to the school and his production companies after actually named after his school, which is only a block away from where the mural is. We went to high school. Overbrook. Wow. Okay. Yeah, good guy. All right. All right. Good being with you. <laughs> Thank you. For all the latest in entertainment news, you can check out Ephraim's weekly show, Studio 5. You can watch it online at cbn.com slash Studio 5 and get all the latest wisdom from Ephraim's grandmother. <laughs> Up next, our Superbook is changing the lives of children all over the world and adults, too. You'll meet the Cooney family right after this. Well, for Tom and Catherine Cooney, time with their grandchildren is also Superbook time. The couple own the complete collection of Superbook DVDs, and the whole family has their favorites. Take a look. Tom and Catherine Cooney love nothing more than a visit from their grandkids. It's a great joy. It means the world to us. And what three-year-old Sonny and two-year-old Weston love to do when they come over is watch Superbook. So after playing some games, they all settle in for an episode. It brings the Bible to life. I love that. They see Joy and Chris, and, and they learn life lessons. This is right, and this is wrong. And it's, you know, it's a clear, clear-cut thing. God is always with me to help me stand up for what's right. The Coonies have collected the entire Superbook series, and they have their favorite episodes. The Christmas story, when the angels come and sing in the heavens when Jesus is born. Another one is Queen Esther. Catherine loves that the kids are learning Bible stories, as well as the ultimate goal of Superbook. Was it an angel? The most important job of a parent is to lead their child to Jesus. And I think Superbook is a really good aid in doing that. And these little children see them at school or see them at church or wherever, 
and go home and tell their parents about it so adults are being saved too. It's just the most wonderful thing. It's all about saving souls. And so when it gets to the end of the video and the song comes on, Sunny sings, it's just adorable. Jesus, you died upon the cross and rose again to save the last. Your children can have Superbook, your grandchildren can have Superbook, and in them having Superbook, you know you're a part of sharing the stories of the Bible with the children of the world. We're now in over 50 languages around the world, and there's our broadcast map showing all the different places where Superbook is being shown. And our surveys are showing over 180 million viewers worldwide last year. We're looking to increase that number. We're in looking to increase the number of languages. We're also looking to increase the number of uh, episodes. So how can you take a part? You can take a part by joining the Superbook Club and saying, yes, I want to be a part of it. For a gift of $25 or more, we'll send you three copies of the latest DVD in the Superbook series. This one is Elijah and the Widow, uh, and it's yours when you join. So if you'd like, it, like to be a part of it, call us, 1-800-700-7000. Well, coming up, how to live in the presence of God and experience Him on a whole new level. Patricia Bootsma joins us next, so don't go away. Patricia was just eight years old when she was told by two people, you will lead people to Jesus. Well, today, Patricia and her husband, John, are doing just that. Take a look. Patricia Bootsma and her husband, John, are senior leaders of Catch the Fire in Canada. For more than 20 years, they have been teaching others about the power of prayer. In the name of Jesus, straighten this spine. Patricia says praying is our connection to the heart and power of God, but many won't take the time to do it. In her book, A Lifestyle of Divine Encounters, Patricia offers practical tips on praying and inspires us to experience God's presence on a whole new level. Well, Patricia Bootsma joins us now, and it's great having you on the show. Thanks for having me. What was your reaction when you were young and people are coming to you and saying, you're going to lead people to Jesus? I was, I do know this, my heart was burning inside of me with such mm. a desire to fulfill my God-given calling. So there wasn't any level of doubt, although I was thinking, oh my goodness, like I, don't, I haven't seen women do anything but make tea and put out the cake, because I was raised in a church that didn't believe in women in ministry. So that was a hurdle to get over. But, you know, just something, you know, came of, God, what does this look like? And I want to fulfill my destiny in you. And that's why I have a passion to see other people fulfill their God-given calling. Uh, what was the environment of that conversation? I mean, you've got two people saying it to you. Yeah, I'm on the how, family how that... farm. I, I milked cows growing up, by the way. I was uh, raised in a Canadian farm. And it was just on the family farm. And I remember asking my mom afterwards, say, Mom, like, who are those people? You know, telling me all about my life. And she's like, well, what people? And I'm like, you know, they were right here. So I, uh, I knew what I saw, but I don't know that anybody else saw. I, ha I do think that they could have been angels in human form, but I can't mm -hmm. prove that. But I read later, you know, Hebrews 13. So I do know this. It was a life-altering encounter, and it really caused me also to believe in the prophetic, that God wants to prophesy. God wants to prophesy to us, but through us as well. Yeah. Um, fast forward, let's go to when you're 19 and, and you have another encounter. It's, it's like the word is sleeping in you. You don't immediately act on it when you're eight and say, well, I'm going to now be an evangelist. Um, what happened at 19? Yeah, I did get born again when I was 12. But I, well, let's back up to when I was 17. I received prayer to receive the infilling of the Spirit, and nothing happened. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, oh, my goodness, I guess this is only for a select few. Believe the lie for two years. Uh, well, why do you think that happens? Because I think yeah, that happens to a lot of people. I wonder. They get the prayer, and there's a lot of anticipation, and then nothing happens. You know, what does it say in Proverbs about, you know, it's the glory of, of uh, man to search out a matter, the glory of kings to reveal it. But it was like this sense of I had to go after this. Mm -hmm. But God put my back in the corner because I was home from university at age 19 for three weeks. Every night I was awakened at 2 a.m. with voices. I saw this dark hooded creature in my room. I'm like, Jesus, Jesus, I'm so afraid. Things would fly across the room. Um, something would fall off the wall. So really was having demonic uh, encounters. 
And I knew I really didn't have authority. I didn't have power. And so I cried out to the Lord and said, okay, God, I, it's in the Bible. And I, I believe, you know, I, I want to be a fool for you. Because then I was thinking, eh, maybe I don't want to do this tongue talking thing. You know, I might look a bit idiot, like an idiot. I'm 19, of course. But then I'm like, God, I just want, I want what you have. So I received prayer uh, from a pastor. I really felt fire coming down from my head to my toes. Driving home, started to speak in tongues for the first time in my life. I was really overwhelmed. Go to my bedroom and said, in the name of Jesus, all this stuff go. And that was the first time I slept in three weeks. But that mm. showed me something. Also authority, how we can have authority and power, you know, through his, through his spirit. And that's a big revelation. I think a lot of Christians never get to that point that mm -hmm. we take the authority. He's given us the authority. That's right. Uh, that's and right. we're supposed to exercise that authority. Let's get to the book, A Lifestyle of Div Divine Encounters. You say there are three principal things that yeah. we as Christians need to do to have that lifestyle. What are they? Well, first of all, it's really all about having a passionate heart for Jesus, because we know that's the great commandment. So how can we do that? How can we, you know, have the fire tended in our hearts. So prayer, positioning ourselves before the Lord, coming into his presence day by day by day. I, uh, I like Corey Ten Boom. She's a hero of mine. She's gone on to heaven. But she said, have your appointment with the king and keep your appointment with the king. So for some, that means that we need to schedule this. We need to put it in our day before I'm going to work, before I'm doing all this stuff. I'm a mom of six kids, by the way, so I know busy as well as ministry, but I know I have to have my time with God, you know, coming into his presence. So praying, seeking his face, and then the whole element of the prophetic, hearing God's voice, it's totally revolutionized my life, is to know that I can hear the voice of God, that he wants to speak to me, the rhema of God, the, the, the now, the spoken word, as well as, you know, his heart. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, they know me, they follow me. The word of God, third element is grounded in the word. You know, we must have this basis of biblical knowledge that, first of all, then we won't fall into deception. We know if what we're hearing is of God, but also it's just, that's the main way God speaks to us, through the word of God. And so we don't have to be theologians or have a seminary degree to love the word, be in the word, and to understand the word. Well, let's, let's stop you on the, just the prophecy, hearing the voice of the Lord. A lot of people would be skeptical about that, and they, they would inquire, are you just listening to voices? Um, how do you know? How do you know what, when it's authentic, and how do you test that you're really hearing from the Lord? And that's where it helps to know the Bible, because A, is it biblically sound? God's not going to speak anything through an you know, inner voice or a thought or a vision or a dream or whatever that's contrary to the Word. Secondly, is it according to the love nature of God, because God is love? Is it filled with the fruit of the Spirit? Because really John 16 says that it's the Spirit who speaks to us. He tells us the things that the Father, the Son are saying. So love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, anxiety is not one of the fruit of the Spirit. So if you're having something make you, you know, anxious, like, oh my goodness, I got to do this or I'm out of the will of God. Well, that's not one of the fruit of the Spirit. Is it also confirmed from other people who hear God? God's not afraid to confirm you know, what's really of him. For example, you know, big important things, where you're going to live, who are you going to marry? <laughs> I had a, a, a relationship for three and a half years, and I was thinking, oh, I'm going to marry this guy because I wanted to marry this guy. The only problem is I never had any confirmations from people who heard the Lord or were really, you know, uh, in him. And so that's another way that he confirms. And so the, the spirit of test uh, of uh, the, the witness of Jesus, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So is his witness, his words, his life, is it all consistent with what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing? And so there's, you know, basic judgment test. Let's not throw out the baby with the bathwater. Let's not throw a prophecy because we've been burned or we've gotten it wrong. Or I'm sad for churches and ministries that don't want the prophetic because, you know, they think it's too much trouble. Yeah, it needs to be pastored. Yeah, it needs to be judged. But it's like that, you know, that scripture in for, Proverbs 14, 4, that says, when the ox is in the stall, there's a bit of a mess, but when the ox is in the stall, you have the strength of the increase that the ox brings. So when the prophetic is operating in your life, and your ministry, you have the strength that it brings, as well as sometimes cleanup. Yeah. <laughs> there could be some chaff. There's a reason Paul told us not yeah. to despise it. Well, we've got some prayer requests that have come in, and Tina says, please pray for my niece for her stage four colon cancer. Uh, Sarah says, please pray, uh, please keep healing on my ringing left ear and my frozen shoulder. And then finally, Liz, 
pray for her family to come back to Jesus. And so do you mind taking some time Let's and praying that. for these? That'd be fantastic. All right, you lead. Yeah. Father, we thank you so much, first of all, for that prayer for salvation. God, I believe that you are really going after uh, prodigal sons and daughters as well. Lord, let it come. Let the, the God of this age that has blinded the eyes of the unbelieving, Lord, let that be broken off of these family members, off of those listening that are praying for their son, their daughter. I just see a, you know, a mother just crying out for her son to be saved, her son who's caught in drugs. And I just feel like the Lord is saying, he is sending out the hound dogs of heaven after that young man. Thank you, Lord, that he will turn in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray for healing of this shoulder. It's not your frozen shoulder. I just feel like God's saying he wants to break that, that mentality that this is always going to be this way. Father, I thank you for healing in Jesus' name. Lord, pour out your spirit. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for those who are crying out to you right now. And we just ask that you would stretch forth your hand yeah. to do miracles, that, there, that peace would come to those who are anxious, peace that would come to those who are troubled. Let your peace be over them and in them and all through them. Let there be peace now. Be the prince of peace to them, Lord God, and shower them with your love, your presence, for we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. If you need prayer, we're here for you. All you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000. Here's a word from Psalms. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. God bless you. We'll see you again.